Hello, in this video we are going to look at a way to impose boundary conditions in, um, in potential flows. Uh, this is the case of conformal mapping this time. So to look at how to apply conformal mapping, we're just going to take the um, example of a particular potential, um, uh, a complex potential. So let's assume that we have a potential flow of complex potential. Now, a complex potential is going to be W of Z equals U zero Z. I'm just going to consider um, in this in this uh, in this context here. Just going to consider the uniform flow in the x direction. So this is the uniform flow in the x direction. Um, and the idea of conformal mapping is that we want to look at how the flow will behave uh, if it goes along a corner. So um, uh, to create a boundary uh, including a corner at z equals zero, we apply the following change of variable. And the following change of the, the, the change of variable is as follows. So we take z, our z, and uh, we are going to uh, recast the z into a capital Z, uh, which has a power pi over alpha, with alpha being the um, corner angle. Okay, so and then the idea is that because we do this, then well, the corresponding flow then looks like um, W, and I'm just going to use capital W to denote a uh, potential flow that is a variable of a, that, that has as a variable capital Z. Um, and it's going to be u0, and then I'm changing my, my z into capital Z pi over alpha. So we can check this, right? So let's check. Um, so the potential w of z, so the, the original potential that we have, that potential uh, leads to a flow with uh, z equals x as a streamline. Streamline. So, well, you know, this is the flow in, uh, uniform flow in the x direction, so all the horizontal lines are streamlined. So I'm picking up one in particular, which corresponds to y equals zero. So that's z equals x, okay? Um, and, and this is clearly easy to, to, to check because W of X uh, belongs to R, right? Uh, if you look at this, it's going to be U zero X. So because W of X belongs to R, then, well, the stream function along this, um, along this line is, is, is zero and therefore it's a streamline. Okay. Um, and what this is, right? And this corresponds to this streamline corresponds to uh, two cases. If we can, if we look at the angles, the first case is theta equals zero, and the second one is theta equals pi. And the idea here is to look at what this change of variable is going to do to our angles. All right. So the change of variable. z equals capital Z pi over alpha, it does not change uh, the theta equals zero uh, part of the streamline, okay? Because all it's doing is compressing it. Remember, you can write down um, Z as um, 
um, as um, a times e to the i theta, and if theta is zero, it's just a constant, it's just a, uh, a, a distance away from zero along that axis, and it does not change that, right? This does not change it. However, um, if we look at um, if we look at the other part of the string streamlined, however, um, you know if we write down the uh, the the other change of variable, right? So if if we inverse the this change of variable, so z equals capital Z pi over alpha, that means that capital Z is lowercase z alpha over pi, right? So if I write this down, uh, and I'm looking particularly at uh, this, so here, right, you can see that if I write down z equals a to the i theta, and theta equals zero, what that does is just a rescaling of the distance. It does not change the angle. So theta equals zero remains theta equals zero. However, if I look at theta equals spy, um, so uh, along the the theta equals spy part of the streamline. Remember that we can write that z equals um, a times e to the i theta, right? Then capital Z has, has a new value, and that new value is a to the alpha, to the, uh, yeah, alpha over pi times e to the i theta, times alpha over pi, where theta equals pi. So that's uh, that's a uh, to the power alpha over pi times e to the i pi alpha over pi. So that rem what, what is left is e to the i alpha. And so what we have done here is there is that the theta equals pi part of the streamline has been mapped onto theta equals alpha. Okay. Now this is the, the, that, that streamline which for which theta was equal to pi now correspond to a streamline for which theta equals alpha. So what we have done here is that if I look at lowercase z, I had that flow right so that was my original um, so that's z e uh, so that's sorry that's w equals u0 z right um, and what I have done through this change of variable uh, so that's z or equals capital Z pi over alpha is to actually map this onto this configuration where this is theta equals zero, this is theta equals alpha. You can see alpha here. And what you have is the flow that is behaving like this around this corner. This concludes this video on conformal mapping.